Hello CIS18A students. Um, this is the first video for Unit 3 lecture and I divided the lecture into two parts. So this is the first part which covers Chapter 4. And in Chapter 4 this week, um, Chapter 4 talks about classes, objects, and method. At, since the beginning, which is in week 1, we already work with a class in Java. Um, so just to dive in a little bit further, now we're going to start incorporating multi-classes. So we wanted to understand what what is an object, how it's used, what is a constructor, um, how to incorporate members, variables, and methods, and so forth. So in Java, you start with a class and a class simply is a template um, to define or form an object. And it uses a class to create the object or construct the object. And object simply is known as instances for the class as you see on page one. So think of it like a class is a blueprint of a house. And it essentially is a set of plans on how to build that object. So in order to build a house, we would use a blueprint and we can think about um, the dimension of the specific room, um, what kind of materials that we would use to structure the house. So a class really is a set of plans to build our object. And here it provides additional detail on what would be a class. And it, it says here that it is not until an object of that class has been created that a physical presentation of that class exists in memory. So when we use the methods and the variable in a class, we would refer to them as members of that class. It's just like how we would have rooms within the house. So the members of the class would consist of variables and methods. And methods, Java is equivalent to function in C++. So the data members are known as instance variables. That's where the data would reside in that class. And basically, we use a class to have an abstraction of specific variables and methods that would work together to be able to provide you with operation for your program. Um, so in the general form, you would start with the keyword class and you would cre create or identify the class name. So you would give it a class name. And we want to use the capital letter for your class name. And your class name needs to be unique. Um, you cannot use other keywords for your class name. So we wanted to make it a unique identifier for that particular class. Then next, what we can do is we can declare are members for that class, which are the instance variables. And in Java, as it is object-oriented programming language, we need to have the type before our variable name. And after we declare our variables, then we would declare our member methods. So here would be the type of your method and your method and its parameters. So basically here, that will be equivalent to member function in C++. So when we declare the methods, we need to specify the type of the method, the name of our method, and the parameters that's used for that method. 
and to enclose we would use the curly brace and we would state the body of the method what is it doing right um, it could be adding certain values together um, it could be that it is displaying certain text or it's acquiring certain input so declaring the methods under that class would make those methods members methods of that particular class and you can have multiple methods inside a class so that's a simple format for our class and you can look at that on page one so something to consider when you have you create a class or you design a class um, and it says that a well-designed class should define one and only one logical entity so a class for example with store names and telephone numbers will not normally store information about stock market average rainfall etc so we can have a class to store customer information um, and prompt the user to input or and then display the input information so we want to think about how each of the class would work with another class um, and <clears throat> the information that is stored inside that class with the member variables and using the, me the member methods is fulfilling a certain objective of your program so ultimately a well-designed class groups logical information together um, so we wanted to make sure that it makes sense um, in our program to to design it so that way it, it would tie um, one class with another class or using some kind of information that would be logical for your program so in the next part here is an example of a class um, we have a class called vehicle and you have the variables these are the members they are passengers fuel cap and mpg for miles per gallon and they are to store whole number integers so you can have members for this specific class and it would all imply that these are some of it can store the values that would represent a vehicle like how many passengers that car would be able to hold what is the fuel capacity for that vehicle and what is the miles per gallon for that vehicle so uh, when we create a class we really state a new data type and in this case we would type it as vehicle as you would see now remember that when we declare a class it's only a type description so we're describing a type um, which is a vehicle type it does not create an actual object until we have a constructor to create our object so once you define a class once you declare a class then you would bring down that class name vehicle and then you would have an object name like minivan so we can name our object anything we want but in this case we want it to reference the type of program or the type of class that we're working with so vehicle and the object is minivan um, the object here can also be pickup truck or um, sedan right so we can have the type to bring down from our class name and then our object name is minivan and we're using the keyword new here that is allowing us to implement a constructor 
That means that we're creating, we're constructing an object called minivan for the vehicle type in that class. So this is how you would create a vehicle object and it's called minivan. So every time that you create an instance of a class, you create an object which consists of a copy for of that instance variable which is defined in that class. So what are some of the variable, the instance variable, fuel cap, passengers, MPG, which was declared previously as you've seen in the screen capture on page two and also below. So what we can do is we can use the object and the member to be able to instantiate the value for that particular instance. So the object is specified on the left which is minivan and on the right that will be the member which is the variable that we previously declared under that class and then we can initialize right we can assign a value for that variable of that object which is minivan so we're saying that the fuel capacity of the minivan is 16 or the number of passengers of the minivan would be 7. So in general you would use a dot operator to access the instance variable and the methods for that object. So here is the program example. Um, earlier we talked about the members. These are the variables of the vehicle class. Then we have a second class now. And in the second class, we would have the main method. So the second class is called vehicle demo. And we have the main method. And under the main method, we have, we construct a vehicle object called minivan and also under the second class we have another member of that the second class is called range and then we can start assigning values to the the minivan so we would have passengers is 7 fuel cap of that object is 16 and MPG is 21. So the point in this is when you create a class, you would then declare the variable. You can incorporate the second class. Then you can construct the object to be able to access the instance variables for that object and assign it value. So now if we wanted to, an int range here is going to be the method. So in for the range, we wanted to be able to store what? To compute the, the fuel, the fuel capacity, multiply it by the miles per gallon. And that's going to be storing in range. Then we're going to output the range of of the minivan what it can carry so it can carry how many passenger and the range of the minivan so in the last part here what that does is it compute the fuel tank and it would display the passenger information and the fuel range so once you have the program written you can compile and test and so the output should show minivan can carry 7 with the range of 336. And on page um, 4 you would see that this is the same program 
but we also added a second object. So not only that we have the minivan as the first object, we also have the second object, which is sport car, that is part of the vehicle type. So here we can then assign the use the sport car object to assign value to passengers, fuel cap, and MPG. And they would be different from the minivan and the minivan passengers fuel cap and MPG. So you can instantiate multiple objects under a, a second class or a different class and be able to access the members variable of the first class and assign the values for each of the instance mem members for that particular object. So then at this point what we can do is we can compute the range for two different type of vehicle. The first object is the minivan which is range 1. The second object which is sport car which we can compute the fuel tank and put that store that into range 2. And then we can output two separate things. So at the end our output would show that the minivan can carry seven with the range of 336 gallons. The sport car can carry two with the range of 168 gallons. So as you can see this is a general example of form of how you can implement multiple classes and multiple objects to be able to access the members of another class and to be able to compute or have operation within your Java program. So earlier we talked about how we would declare an object so you simply use class type and then give it a name and then you would use the keyword new which allows us to the new operator allow us to dynamically allocate the, the space and memory for that object and returns the reference to it so we would use the new operator and then again the name of our class okay so here it provides the definition or description of how you would create an object or define an object. So first what we need to do is we we need to use the type, give the object a name, and then we would use an equal an equal symbol or sign here and use a new operator and then also include the ve the vehicle which is the class. Now we can make it where it would be decoration in one line and then allocating the object in the next line or we can do it all in one line so you can have vehicle minivan minivan is new vehicle or you can have vehicle minivan is new vehicle so you can have it in both lines or you can have it all in one line and so the first line really is the decoration of the the minivan and this and ref and then use it as a reference for the vehicle um, so the second line would refer to the new vehicle object is the minivan so it references it to the minivan next I'm going to talk about reference variables and in your project, you're required to implement multiple class, object, and also reference variable. So object reference variables, um, we can assign primitive type to a variable, or we can use a variable that would receive a copy of a value 
um, from another variable. So when you assign an object in reference of the variable, then you are changing the object of that reference, how that variable is referred to. So let's take a look at this example. You would have a vehicle car one. So this is the object called car one type vehicle and we would use a new operator here so basically we declare it as an object and we reference that as part of the vehicle object then the next part we would have vehicle car 2 is car 1 so what we're doing here is we're primitively saying that the second object car 2 is the same is car 1. Car 1 and car 2 both refer to the same object. They're the same object. So the assignment of car 1 to car 2 simply makes car 2 refer to the same object as does car 1. So now if we put it into use we can say car 1 mpg 26 when it print, it would access 26 for the same object, which can be used for car 1 and car 2. So it should say 26 mile per gallon for both. Now, even though car 1 and car 2 refer to the same object, they are not linked. So when we look at this, we have car one, car two, and car three. Car two is the same as car one, and car three is declared and referenced as an object here. And then now we would do car two is the same object as car three. So car two is now referring to car three to the same object. So we can simply reassign it like this and that would change how one variable would refer to the other of the same object. Next we're going to talk about methods and methods are just subroutines that allow us to manipulate data for the class. Um, it provides a way that we can access the data. Um, so you can think of methods as functions, but in Java we would refer to it as methods, which are subroutines. And you can have one or more statement in the method. Um, each method performs a certain task. So the way that we want to design our method is that it has a specific task to fulfill. Um, so let's say that I want to have a method that's going to obtain or acquire user input. And then I have another method that's going to display what the user has entered into the system. So you want to use two separate methods for that. And each method would be given a specific unique name. And the name would refer to the overall task, right, the, that particular task. So um, often you would see that people would use set and get um, for function in C, C++. You can have set and get in the same way or you can have obtain user input, um, display data, um, things like that. So this name is what we want to do is we would then use this that given name to call the method like how you would use the given name for the function to call the function in C or C++. So you can use whatever name that you like but remember that the main is reserved for the method. We don't use main. We want to use it um, anything other than main because main is used for executing the program. So don't use Java's keyword 
or reserve names. So the method will have the parentheses after its name. Um, so the example is that we would have get val and get val would have the parentheses after its name. So the notation would help you distinguish between the names for a method or the names for the variable. So the name for the variable won't have the parentheses where the method would have the parentheses and that's the difference. So if you see a method that use void, that means that we're not returning any value uh, from that method. Uh, very much like what you've seen with C or C++. So if you're using void, that method does not return a value. And the highlight that I put there, you can reference page 6 for that. So in the example on page 7, it uses, again, the, the example that we've been talking about. Now, void range in that example, this does not return a value. So simply, we use that to display the range, just to, sh to output text and show the range of our, our, our field. Then in the second class, we have add meth class and in here we have multiple objects that's what we talked about previously and then we would also have calculations for for uh, or we would have assignment for the value for passenger fuel cap and miles per gallon so to look at another example that would be returning a value So when you, re when you return from a method, there are two forms. So for the use of void method that does not return, in the void method, you can cause an immediate termination of the method using the form of return. Um, and, or you can use type base method where you want to return value, not void. So for the void method, if you wanted to cause immediate termination, you would use a return. So in this example, I have void my meth, and inside this method, I have int i. i is used for the for loop, where in which it has three parts. It starts at zero. It's going to go up to ten. It's going to stop at after it complete 9 so it stops at 10 if i is 5 return so it's going to stop at 5 it won't reach 10 so because of this nested if under that for loop it will stop at 5 now if we want to so this is going to cause the termination there as you would see where it would we would use return here if we want to return from the method, um, it would the method returns if it's done or if there's an error. So if we see an error, then it's going to return. If it sees an error, the compiler sees an error, it's going to return. So the void method can return only in two ways. With the closing curly braces reach at the end, or if the return statement is executed. And this is important to note. Okay. For the return value, most methods will return a value, and that's the whole point in using methods. Um, so in, in such case, we are not using void. We would have return a specific value. So um, methods return a value to calling the routine using this form return and a value. So non-void method will return type. Okay, so in this example, 
right here is where we would return the value after we calculate the the tank, the fuel tank range, um, by using miles per gallon times fuel cap. So we can return the calculation there. So for the next part, we're going to talk about using parameter. Now, parameter for the method, we would refer to this as argument that would go inside the parentheses, like in this case with int x where the arrow is pointing here. Now, inside the method, the variable that receives the argument is called parameter. And a parameter is within the scope of its method. Um, and so its special task of receiving an argument, it acts like any other local variable. So in this case, we have int x here as a parameter. And you can have multiple, or you can just pass the arguments using a value, 10. 9, 8, like this. So in the case where if we put a value in here, we will pass the value as arguments there. And you can, as I mentioned, you can have multiple parameters and we would use a comma, a separator, to separate one from the next. So int a comma int b. So this method has two parameters. Or sometimes you can have three parameters or more. Right? And if we're using value, we would have two comma twenty. So we would pass two arguments. Two arguments here. So I recommend taking a look at the example and also when you're doing the lab, you will be able to see. Okay, next we're going to talk about constructor. So constructor initialize the object when it's created. Um, it would have the same name as its class and it is syntactically similar to the method. Constructor have no explicit return type. All classes have a constructor, whether you define it or not. So when you have a class, you have a constructor. Um, uh, Java, like other languages, automatically provide a default constructor. Python is similar to this, um, or you can manually define the constructor. So here is how you would use a constructor. Here is a class called my class. I have we have a member int x and when you bring down the class name using the parentheses here, you simply have a constructor. So then now you can assign 10 to x. Now under under class const demo under the main method here you notice that we have we declare the object and we reference that object to to the my class so here at this section we have two objects we constructed t1 and t2 it, they are objects of my class. So the constructor for my class is seen like this. Now if you want to use to add parameters to the constructor, you they would be added like how you would add in, in the method. You would use them inside the parentheses. So Earlier, we would have the constructor my class without the parameter here. 
but now when we add int i, that becomes the parameter of the constructor, my class. So if I have a class name uh, vehicle here, to have a constructor, I would have vehicle parentheses, and if I'm using a parameter like int x, I would put that inside here. Now, we can also use it like this. Um, so in this, what we're doing is we are defining, uh, we, we are using my class object T1, and we are constructing this object, and we're using argument with our constructor, my class. So in this example, it shows you this is the constructor vehicle, and we have parameters, three parameters, int p, int f, and int n. These are the members. We reassign them. So we would reference passengers for p, fuel cap for f, and mpg for m. So as you can see, this is an example of using the constructor with multiple parameters. Let's talk about the new operator. We touched on this earlier. But with the new operator, um, it would be used in such that it would be used to construct the object. So we have class variable is new class name and argument. So if a class does not define its own constructor, new will use the default constructor that's supplied by Java. So if we don't provide the constructor for that class, when we use the new operator, it would use the default constructor and it can be used to create object of any class type. So we would use the new operator to create any object in a class. And it returns the reference of the newly created object. So where we would have limited amount of memory allocation um, and as when we use new it will not allocate the memory for an object if the if you have some some form of exception um, now java does java does um, garbage collection but here it talks about how when you create different objects that would allocate various memory location using the new operator. Um, and because it's dynamically allocated, it would recover and free up for the unused object. So if that object is not used, it would free it up and which gives it garbage collection compared to what you would see in C++ where you have to manually free that up but with Java for the garbage collection system the objects would be automatically reclaimed. So for final exam make sure that we understand how new operator is used and um, the Java garbage collection process on how it's reclaiming the memory space automatically when that object is not in use or there's no reference to that object um, where it would be no longer needed so that memory will be free up to be reused or recycle. 
And lastly, for chapter four, we're going to talk about this keyword. And so um, when we're using method or the method is called, it's past implicit argument, which is reference um, for the object that's invoked. You can use the reference called this. So if we're looking at this program here on how it's using this, we have a class, PWR. We have the members, double B and E, double vowel. And we have a constructor that's using three parameters, or two parameters, base and EXP. Then we reference B for base and E for EXP. And we initialize and assign, or we assign one to val. And we have a control statement. If EXP is zero, return. And for our for loop, um, we would have val is val times base. So in for our method, we would have double get pow get power, and we would return the value. So here, what we would have in the main is that for power of x, x is an object that we construct, and these are the arguments that are passed. Okay. So when it when it operate when the program runs, it's gonna show when we call for the method here, it's gonna take x, it's gonna take four and raise it to the second power, it's gonna give us sixteen. And then two point five and raise it to the first power, which is two point five, and five point seven raise it to the zero power, which is one. So these are the lines where we call the method get power and the method is stated here. So when we return val, we can also use return this dot val. So this allows us to make a copy of the val when that object is invoked and returned. So the similarity between return val or re return this val in that when we do a return val we don't without any of the object of the class we would be able to return the value from that method but if we return this val it actually create a copy of val associated with that object to be returned so we can have association for that object if we use return this val. So here this shows you additional illustration on how this can be used. We can have the object, we can have this dot b and this is the constructor Right, and so when we have this dot b and b is referencing base, this dot e and e reference exp, and then when we return, we can return this value. So that would point back, it would point back to the method and operate the method for that particular object. So it refers to B and it refers to E. And for the example here, please take a look at the example. Make sure that you, if you're not clear, um, go through, run the example, and then also read the information that's provided in the text or in the notes. It gives you a description of how this would be used and how it would be used for the objects 
when it's invoking that method um, when you're using it with the return statement. So please watch the next video which covers chapter 5 in which we talk about array and array is one of the required area for your project as well. Um, very similar to C++. So please watch the second part of the lecture.